championship contender and Mike Langston right there. But the girl I want to talk about, Christy Passmore. Last year, she turned a lot of heads in the Arca Remax. Uh, but I'll tell you what, we're all out there and we're trying to race. When you got a chance to pass somebody, you want to go. But uh, <laughs> you, you see, it's hard Whoa. to just stay in line. Mike Langston in the 66. McClure in the 04. Wow, we got some crazy racing going on here. And we're going to have a lot more to come because we have over three quarters of the race to go here for the Arca Remax Series at Daytona. Fun stop. You'll notice right behind them is Shane Meal's car. These guys have been communicating back and forth, and they said, we think Meal's car might be a little bit faster. So don't be surprised if you see the 88 pull over and let Meal go ahead. They believe those two cars might be able to draft away from the pack. Lindsay? Thanks, Ray. Just talked to Bill Venturini, Billy's crew chief. They say number 25 came in. They topped off fuel, made a little bit of a chassis adjustment because it was still a little too tight, sent him back out. Now they're excited about their new track position. Back to you guys. There's Billy Venturini and the Melling cylinder sleeves. Number 25 will have more from Daytona when we come back. It's like the old White Snake song. Here we go again. Green flag for the Advanced Discount Auto Parts 200 for the Arca Remax Series. And Greg Sachs is the man out front, but Shane Meal is on his tail. Uh, definitely uh, Shane Meal is on his tail, but Kurt Bush, or Kyle Bush is the third car in line, and he wants his lap back, and I think his car is strong enough to get it back. He's got to be in front of that leader when that yellow comes out so he can get back into this race. And that's all that racing luck that all the drivers want all the time. If he gets out front, he needs that. He most definitely does. Shane Meal returning to racing in the ARCA Remax Series here at Daytona. Greg Sachs just in front, and there's a contrast of ages right there. Shane Neal, one of those young guys. And Greg Sachs, one of the seasoned veterans. Keith Mert back out on the racetrack. But here we go, the young and the restless. Let's see what everybody's doing. Shane Neal second. Menard, he's been up front, back to 14th. And uh, Christy Passmore had some trouble. Brian Hemphill, though, we saw him twice come down pit road and overshot his pit both times. Right. Well, that's just an experience deal. The reason Paul Menard's 14th is because I believe he's the first car that pitted. So he's got a whole tank of fuel, which could come into big play later if these guys don't catch that, uh, uh, catch another yellow with, within their fuel. Window. What's up, X-Ray? Bob, most people are aware that Shane Meal was suspended from NASCAR competition late last year. However, he came here to the ARCA race to say, look, guys, I can drive these race cars. Everything's cool. And he has not only gotten his clearance from the ARCA Remax series, but also been reinstated to get a NASCAR license. He will compete in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series here next Friday, driving the number 15 for Billy Ballou. Also believe he will be attempting to be in the Bush race. So Shane Meal has his NASCAR license back as well as his ARCA license. Only one prior start for Shane Meal in the ARCA Remax Series back in 2001 at Atlanta. Led 14 laps and finished second to Kerry Earnhardt. Well, I think he's gonna, gonna try to stay in line there. Uh, Bush gets his lap back. He wants to be second in line, but we'll just have to wait and see. But he's bringing a pretty good group with him there. You know, we heard a pit report earlier that Greg Sachs might pull over and let Shane Meal go by, but Greg is really taking off. Yeah, it uh, looks like Greg's car is a little faster. First, uh, of course, he's also got Kyle Busch pushing him, which uh, is helping him quite a bit. And this other group's running side by side. So it'll uh, be interesting to see what uh, how this all plays out. Wait a second. You're going almost 200 miles an hour here. How can you push somebody? Well, I'll tell you what. In, in uh, Bud shootout practice last night, they, they sure didn't seem to have, have no problem doing it. You can hit them down the straightaway, plus you just uh, push the air and just pack the air in the car and give them a shove. But look at this. Wow. For the lead, Shane Meal on the outside, Greg Sachs on the inside, and the car that's a lap down. Kyle Busch on the inside. Man, that's a battle. Yes, it is. Uh, it's pretty stressful right there. Everyone's Whoa. on a different agenda. Brent Sherman also sticks his nose in the air in the Serta number 44. We got them all packed up together. Bobby Gerhardt, the pole sitter, he's trapped in there. But now we got Kyle Busch up in the front if that yellow comes out. And it'll be hard for him to get back around Kyle. He's going to have to kind of mess up and let them have too big a hole. And, and it's going to take a couple of them to get a good run at him to do it. 
right now he's got to have his fingers crossed, his toes crossed. His, well, he can't have his legs crossed, but. But he's also got a full tank of fuel and 40 something laps to get that yellow flag. Check out that Chad Blunt there in that silver number 64. We spoke about him earlier in the show. Of course, he replaced his girlfriend in that car in a soap opera type. And Ricky Byers two weeks ago out of Phoenix, and they ran extremely strong. So, uh, you know, he will be a force to be reckoned with this just summer over in that Bush car at RCR. You know, National Speed Sport News have read that for a long time. Read a lot about Clint Boyer, but it wasn't until I went to Lakeside last year and I met up with a guy whose nickname is Dirty Dan, and he told me all about Clint Boyer. He said he was the baddest race car driver in the land. Auto Parts 200, let's take a look. Well, we see the 49 car, Dan Shaver, start to move up. You get up underneath those cars, it, those cars get loose, and then, right? He gets into Paul Menard, and this thing, everybody did a good job. Uh, you, you're gonna get wrecked right there. We see some guys wiggle through, try to minimize damage as much as you can. Check out this. Oh, man, that car just snuck through there. Here's another angle of what we saw. Let me tell you about this track, especially up here in three and four. The very bottom's got quite a bit of grip. The top's got quite a bit of grip. The middle is no man's land. It is slick in the middle of this racetrack. And we have had two accidents right here, uh, fairly close to one another. They were all, both of them were multi-car accidents, but both of them could have been substantially worse than they, they turned out being. Some pretty awesome driving, actually. I see Ron Cox on pit road. And there is the number 75 of Shane Meal. Right? Well, Bob, I'm with his crew chief, Joey Cudmore. Joey, this is a little bit of an interesting story. You guys built this race car as a Ford, but it's not like that anymore, right? Uh, we tested here in late December, and uh, we weren't real happy with our test. So about three weeks ago, we cut it off and built a Chevrolet. And uh, we really appreciate DEI for flying the motors for us to run really good and uh, thank everybody at CLR for backing us. Tell me about the pit stop situation. You guys came in, did four tires just one time, you got enough gas to go. Yeah, we're good all the way to the end. Okay, Shane Meal with a good car full of gas, got four tires, and Joey Cudmore says an awful lot of work has happened in just three weeks when they transformed that car from a Ford to a Chevrolet. You know, Schrader, we've seen these guys kind of run single file, double file, even three abreast at times. He has been good. There's Hemphill. His entire family is here, including two of his sisters. Three abreast, possibly Shane Meal looking to the inside. Wow. It's not over yet. Clint Boyer fights back. Ryan Hemphill right there. Meal trying not to go. Wow. He pushes up. Yep, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you sound pretty confident looking up here. Yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's, it's just, oh. oh, this is, not, this is plenty. Oh! Yeah, yeah, this could be big yet. Okay, Boyer, his first race here at Daytona. Gerhardt goes to the inside there, but Boyer, is he a little bit nervous now? Is that why we're seeing him dance all around? No, actually, he's not nervous enough. <laughs> uh, and and uh, Mio is uh, extremely loose up underneath him. Man, Richard Childress, I'm sure, watching this race and just gritting his teeth and just praying. Yeah, well, it's okay. Richard had another driver for years that was just like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about uh, yeah, one Dale, Dale Earnhardt. Yeah. yeah. She keeps see? getting down. See, he keeps getting down next to, to uh, me and keeps making him loose. And if you look at right behind me is Bobby Gerhardt in that number five car in uh, the Lucas Oil car. And he comes off the corner and he's just dancing all over the place too. Yeah. You see the front of these cars are round, so they're a little different than the trucks that are basically square. And when you hit people with these, you don't hit them smooth. Uh, the trucks get by with a lot more beating and banging than these do. But uh, I'll tell you what, this is what Frank Kimmel, Frank Kimmel uh, wants to look up in their mirror along with uh, Bush and, and see these guys doing this. Where are they? They're way out ahead. Well, that's because these guys are side by side and losing a tremendous amount of ground besides putting themselves in terrible danger. Oh, oh yeah. Neil yeah. really is. Yeah. It's, uh... Oh, look, Billy Venturini is in that pack, too, so he is another one of the lucky ones thanks to this side-by-side -side racing that have broken off with Kimmel and Kyle Busch. 
Now the spotters and the teens for that seven and the 75 car are a little bit more relaxed, being that they're not racing side by side anymore. Well, I'd say the, the, the spotters for the uh, 75. 75. The rest, the rest of them still need to be stressed up there just a little <laughs> bit. Craig Sachs, he led earlier here. He is also involved in there in that red and yellow seven number 88 car. Greg Sachs finished seventh in this race last year. Oh, you don't want to go away now because we've seen some awesome racing and there's more to come here on Speed. In the 35th spot after not getting by Tech, he had to go way back there. Oh, here we go. The 77 of Hemphill, Clint Boyer in between and Bobby Gerhardt squeezes his own car out of a spot. Gerhardt, who has had trouble with the handling of that car all day long, started on the pole, has not been able to keep it up there. Sacks in the middle there. 10 laps to go. 10 laps shootout here at Daytona on the high banks. The leaders way out front, but this right here is the battle to watch. I got goosebumps looking at that. These guys got goosebumps too, Kyle Busch. Trying to win the big one here for the ARCA Remax Series. But Frank Kimmel is right behind. Never finished higher than third. He's in second right now, and he really, whoa! Sachs is in the wall. Gets hit from behind. Zach spinning down the backstretch. Eric McClure just scoots by. Wayne Anderson also involved, the two-time NASCAR Southeast Series champion. Gerhardt looking. Veterini snakes, he goes outside, Shane Meal goes with him. He's gonna pull up at the second spot side by side with the five-time Parker Remax Series champion. But he's got no help. Nobody goes out there, Billy Venturini with no friends at all here at Daytona. And that allows Kyle Busch to come down to the start-finish line. Kyle Busch kicks him here at Daytona and whoa, wins the race, but trouble. Shane Meal and Hemphill get together, Gerhardt involved. You knew it was gonna happen. Gerhardt, Blunt involved as well. Shane Meal there sliding on the infield. What a finish here at Daytona for the Arca Remax Series. Wow. Woo. Kyle Busch is your winner. Frank Kimmel is right there as well. But how about that? The 18-year-old, part of the Young and the Restless bunch, wins the big one here at Daytona for the Arker boys and girls. We'll be back and we'll hear from him in a moment. Speed Channel's coverage of the Arca Remax series is brought to you by Remax. Outstanding agents, outstanding results. And by Gladiator Garage Works. Gladiator Garage Works, official garage of Arca, is proud to announce that Kyle Busch is the gladiator of the race. Gladiator, it's time to rethink the garage. The sun sets on the Arca Remax series race here at Daytona. That man, Kyle Busch, the winner. But look at this finish. Kyle Busch out front. Billy Venturini and Shane Meal bumping and banging right to the line. Ryan Hemphill, oh, smacks into the 75. Wow, that was pretty tough right there. Tough break for Shane Meal. Hemphill involved. Billy Venturini is able to continue, but whoa. Bonsai move there. You got to go for it. You got to go for the position. And that's what it was all about. Here we go, another replay of the finish. Venturini tried the outside of Kimmel, had no friends whatsoever to go along with him. Shane Meal had been loose all race long, gets a little loose right there. That allows Hemphill to sneak on the inside, but here he goes below the yellow line. As Schrader said, tough to go behind, below the yellow line here. He just kind of sneaks up and hits the 75. Woo. Absolutely incredible finish here at Daytona for the Advanced Discount Auto Parts 200. Don? Wow, Frank.
Let's take a look at the Arca Remax Series results from the Advanced Discount Auto Parts 200. See the top five right there. Ryan Hemphill, we are told, has been called to the Arca Remax Series trailer. Bobby Gerhardt, six. Chad Blunt in seventh. Mike Lang Langston with a great run today in ninth. And Jeff Kendall, the former Arca, excuse me, 